The New Order, Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 through 27. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper, and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told, is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. And I, Daniel, fainted, and was sick certain days. Afterward, I rose up, and did the king's business. And I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. The prophecy in this passage reads equally true of both Antiochus and the Antichrist. For those who don't know who Antiochus is, allow me to give you a brief history. After the death of the great Greek conqueror, Alexander the Great, in 323 BC, a 22-year struggle followed. When the dust settled, Alexander's kingdom had been divided, as Daniel had foretold two centuries earlier. Lysimachus took over the Antigonoid dynasty and ruled Asia Minor and Thrace. Ptolemy established his kingdom in Egypt, where his family would rule for centuries to come. Seleucus held on to the original prize that Alexander had coveted, Persia. He rebranded it the Seleucid Empire. Antiochus IV, the eighth king in the Seleucid line, ruled from 175 BC to 164 BC. He was a treacherous, vengeful monarch who eventually unleashed his hatred toward his subjects who lived to the south, the people of Israel. Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 through 27. This is an example of a prophetic passage that has both a near and far fulfillment. Quote, king of fierce continents refers to the Antichrist and not Epiphanes. However, if we compare verse 9 through 14, it quickly becomes apparent that the characteristics and career of Antiochus are parallel with those of the Antichrist. There are several parallels between Antiochus and the Antichrist that we will not look into today. We are going to look at only two parallels. One, both of them claim to be gods and both impose their own religion. Antiochus IV took upon himself the title Epiphanes, which means illustrious one or God manifest. And we see that the Antichrist exalts himself in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4 who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Two, they shall both prosper and thrive. Antiochus Epiphanes looked like a total success. The coming Antichrist will look like a complete winner until God topples his reign. The New World Order is a conspiracy theory which theorizes that at some point political systems all across the world will no longer be divided but will one day be under one rulership and leadership. This will quite literally bring forth a new period of change and disrupt the world's power. The attractiveness of the quote New World Order is that it markets the idea to remove the world of wars and political strife and it promises to eradicate poverty, disease, and hunger. Its purpose is to meet the needs and hopes of all mankind through worldwide peace. Those who link the New World Order to the Antichrist typically highlight Revelations chapter 13, verses 15 through 17, which talks about the beast or the world leader who would rise in the last days. Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, 
to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. These three verses reveal to us that there will be a clear economic strategy of the first beast and the second beast. And the Bible says that the beast will enforce everyone, great and small, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark either on their foreheads or on their right hands, without which they will not be able to perform any economic or financial transaction. Although the Bible does not explicitly mention that the Antichrist will introduce a cashless society, it is understandable why several Bible scholars have reached the conclusion that in order for the Antichrist to monitor the transactions of society, a cashless society will have to be in place. The reason being, as long as people are using cash, transactions can be completely in private. But if all currency becomes electronic, then every transaction can be monitored. With the advancement of technology, the infrastructure is already in place to usher in the enforcement of the mark of the beast. Look at the speed of change. 100 years ago, ATMs, debit cards, and digital currencies did not exist. But all these technological advancements have happened in the last century. In the book of Matthew, we learn a tremendous amount from the interaction between the Lord Jesus Christ and Satan. If you remember in the book of Matthew, Satan offered to give him the kingdoms of the world. Matthew chapter four, verses eight through nine. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, all these things I will give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Satan said, quote, these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Satan is the God of this world and the kingdoms of this world are indeed the devils and for the devil to give. Evidently, Satan has the authority over this world. Notice that Jesus did not rebuke Satan stating these kingdoms are not yours to give. Rather, he corrected him stating only, God alone is the one we should worship. The devil has immense power and authority. He is described as the God of this world in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Satan gained his authority through deceit and treachery. Adam and his descendants gave the devil this authority. Initially, God gave Adam the earth as a stewardship. Genesis chapter 1, verses 28 through 30. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. Unfortunately, Adam turned his authority over to Satan, and Satan became the god of this world. Yes, indeed, we do know that ultimately all things belong to God, but God allows Satan to function as the God of this age, the God of this world, and he can raise up a person in this world and place them at heights above all of the world systems. And that is what he will do with the Antichrist. He will bestow the kingdoms of this world at his feet. Back to the parallels between Antiochus and the Antichrist. Both claim to be gods and both impose their own religion. And we see in the book of Revelation, the Antichrist will be worshiped. Living in our advanced society, it may seem strange to us to have the whole world give this kind of worship and reverence described in Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17, to a man and the image of a man. But this is something that will happen. You need to remember that Satan is a powerful being, a being that should not be underestimated. And he is a being that has been deceiving mankind for thousands of years. He is described as the very father of lies. He is a being that is smarter than you and I. 
Although he is not omniscient like God, he is smarter than any human being and has been observing mankind for thousands of years. Scripture makes it clear that God alone is omniscient. God alone knows all things. But Scripture also reveals to us that angels watch and observe. They watch and observe. And no doubt, Satan has been watching and observing mankind. So hanggang dito na lang po ang share ng video na to mga kaibigan at sana po ay mayroon po tayong natutunan tungkol po sa kaaway ng Diyos. Alam na itong mga Antichrist po. So God bless you po sa inyong lahat and thank you for watching my videos. Uh, subscribe sa hindi pa nakapag-subscribe and share din para malaman ng iba ang tungkol po sa pahayag na nagdito na ating maririnig. Thank you so much. God bless you po.